Good morning. Uh, my name is Valentin. Uh, I work for CodeSync. Uh, I work on something called the Free Desktop SDK, which is a runtime of flat pack applications. Uh, we are trying to use the Free Desktop SDK for other purposes than just flat pack. And first, I will go to that reason. So we do uh, desktop applications. And for desktop application, it's not like um, developer are not necessarily, necessarily Linux experts. Uh, they have maybe, maybe are not Linux developers at all, and they want sometimes to port their existing application to uh, Linux. And uh, it's a bit of a problem because on all the other platform, you have a unified SDK, and when you come to Linux, uh, well, this is not working, so there's no Linux SDK. Um, and of course, we don't want any unified Linux SDK. We, it's nice to have a diversity in a Linux platform. Um, but uh, there is a problem then. If uh, this person, these developers who want to port an application to Linux, uh, try to look at how do I distribute my application, build and distribute my application on Linux, there is a lot of different ways to do it. Um, and many of them are very difficult. Uh, it's, you need to be an expert in dynamic linking to understand some of them. Um, and the thing is that if you want to touch several, uh, a, a large public, you will need to deploy to several of them. It's not just one. You can't just say, I will uh, just make a package for Ubuntu. Well, first, which version of Ubuntu? Because you probably have to rebuild for each version to be, to be safe that it will work everywhere. And, uh, and uh, it, it will just be a very small uh, uh, group of users. Uh, in this list, is, this is not, not complete. There is a lot more ways to distribute applications. Uh, but um, uh, here we can see that there are different types. And the, the, ones, the three ones on top, they use uh, containers. So the two first is mostly for desktop application, even though uh, Snap can also uh, distribute services and also uh, what's called um, uh, yeah, other stuff. Uh, and Docker is more for backend. But they are very similar. The rest is either difficult to use or difficult to uh, use as a developer. So, but the problem is that in this three first example, there is some fragmentation. And the fragmentation is not about just having several options. Having several options is fine. The problem is that if you want to uh, make an application for uh, um, uh, SnapD, uh, users, you will need to use all the tools from Snap, and you won't be able to reuse any of this to make your application work on Flatpak. Um, so this is the issue. So I'll come back to Free Desktop SDK. So Free Desktop SDK is a user land runtime for desktop application. So it's it's something to work on a runtime for um, containers. It's not a distribution. There is no packet manager. There is no configuration tools. There is no installation. It's really a basic thing. Uh, it's the best for the GNOME SDK and the KDE SDK on Flatpak. And we, we first target Flatpak, but uh, we want also to target other things. Uh, it's built with Bitstream. So Buildstream, what is Buildstream? Buildstream is not the tool that is used for Flatpak, uh, to build an application for Flatpak, but we use that for the free desktop SDK because it's much more general. So it's a tool for integration of software stacks. Um, it doesn't care about the backend where you will distribute. What it cares is about building. So it has just artifacts. and. It's extensible with plugins, so if you really want to have a backend there, you can just add it. So here are the thing that we have is that you can also use Buildstream for your application, 
you use the Freedest app SDK, and you use Buildstream, and you can generate uh, Flatpak repositories or snap files or Docker images. We'll talk a bit about Buildstream. So Buildstream, uh, how, how we use is that um, you have a project, you make a project, and you have lots of elements. And every element represents one piece of software. For example, you have an element for GCC, one element for Binutils, uh, I don't know, an element for the Mesa drivers. Uh, Elements have dependency between each, uh, each other's, so they are build and, and runtime dependencies. So we have a graph, which can be quite big, but uh, this is used to be used to to build an environment to build every step. So, for example, if you want to build GCC, you will need to have the binutils. Uh, and it has a build dependency, and it will just make an environment where it will, will, will put the binutils for you. You probably also have need to have another GCC to build GCC. Uh, so it's uh, you can reproduce builds easily. This is built with bubble wrap, which is a container uh, thing. Um, the artifacts are cached. So once you have built once, you don't have to rebuild unless you change something. So it detects uh, if you have changed something in the rebuild. And it can be also remotely cached. So if you work uh, in a team, that's uh, useful. Uh, so you have a graph of lots of elements. Um, when you want to put everything together, we have what we call the integration commands. This is like post-install script. So what we do is just take all the artifacts, flatten everything together, and run all the commands that will just finish the installation of your image. And we do that for every build of every element. We just take all the dependencies and do that. And of course, if you want to check out an artifact, the result of your build, the result of your application, uh, the build of your application, you will uh, get those commands to run and to finish your installation. Um, another thing that is interesting is that the uh, Buildstream project can depend on other Buildstream project, and they can just take elements from the graph, the dependency graph from the other project. And we should see how it's useful. This is an example of element, how you write an element in Buildstream. So it's actually not complete. I removed just one part, but uh, this is how to build transmission. Uh, transmission is just a, a small software for BitTorrent transfer. Um, you can see that uh, we described it at using uh, the plugin Auto Tools on the top kind. So this will you use all the commands that are already registered for the Auto Tools command. Um, we have plugins for many of the different uh, build system, but you can make your own plugin easily. Then you are, we have the dependencies. You can see that some are build dependencies. Some don't have any type, and then it means build and runtime. And we have also some dependencies are junctions. So it uses a junction, which is a project that is uh, upstream project. In this case, we build a transmission of, the, of free desktop SDK, so we just import some element on, from the free desktop SDK. We can set up some variables, which is to override some behavior of our plugin. The plugin will use them. So here we just have config parameters. And uh, we have a description of our source. We can, here it's just a simple git a repository that we get. Uh, the last line, which is the, um, the commit, is just generated by tracking, so you don't have to type that part, you just have to use a command that puts it for you. You can, of course, have patches and lots of different things. You have lots of different plugins for also the sources. So this is a very simple way to describe how to compile one element. And you have to imagine that you have 
lots of files that are like that for each of your elements, and they all depend on each other. So for free desktop SDK, we need uh, three different output, and we made some plugins. Uh, for each of these outputs uh, that we have, we will have uh, one element that will use one of these plugins. And mainly this will just have a dependency on what we want to put in that image. And also some information on the metadata for that image. Because uh, the metadata that is in Flatpak application or Snap application or Docker is different. For example, there is no exposed port in Flatpak or Maybe there is snap, but not in Flatpak. But there is some in Docker, for example. This is an example of metadata that we need that will be in the element for this every of these outputs. So for the Flatpak, we just have two plugins. Uh, for people who know the details of Flatpak, we have a Flatpak image which uh, prepare an image for Flatpak build export, and then we have another plugin that takes multiple images because Flatpak typically split application into several image and extensions. So this is the Flatpak repo will take all your images and put it to one repo. For Snap, we have a very simple plugin which only cares about just putting metadata next to some artifacts because Snap is relatively simple. And we use just a generic script to um, make a, a squash FS. For Docker, it's a bit more complex plugin. Uh, we have a plugin that makes uh, um, layers because we want to use layers. We just don't want to check out an artifact and import it right away into Docker because we want to be able to say that an application used for desktop SDK should, should not I should be able to reuse a layer as other application that use a Freddy's sub SDK. And this plugin can either output OCI or Docker 1 to images. So I will come to the detail of the layering in uh, OCI images because this is uh, the tricky part to understand, I think. So OCI images or Docker images are a stack of layers. Uh, for Bitstream, we have a graph. Uh, it could be an idea to just say, well, I flatten my graph and then get all my layer, one layer per element, but this is not possible. And the reason is that uh, if you flatten two different graphs that have common elements, the order of those elements in the stack will be different. And might be some elements that are also missing. So while the identifiers of the layers itself will be will be the same. If you look at the implementation of Podman or Docker, the way it will be stored on disk uh, or on the uh, server uh, will be uh, using probably some chain ID, which is depending on also the, tack, uh, the, the layers on top of it, uh, on bottom, under it. But, um, so we can use it and also we have a lot of elements, and Docker is not really made for using a lot of elements, especially we have some backend drivers that might not be able to have layering on many, many layers. So instead, we force the users to say exactly what they want. Uh, but we provide this layering, but you have to expl be explicit about how you do this layering. Um, this is an example. So this is how the layers we have decided to make them in uh, Freddy's sub SDK. So I simplified the graph because the graph is big and doesn't get, get in the slide. So we I just extracted some elements that are the SDK, the platform, and the bootstrap, which are three different uh, layers of the or for virtual layers of, or of or SDK, and next to that, I've made some elements that represent the different uh, things that I want to have as 
OCI uh, layers. Note that we don't distribute all of them as an image. The bootstrap is not distributed. Um, uh, but it will be used just to make a layer that would be reused by other um, uh, other elements. So here we can see that platform OCI, for example, will take platform BST, it will take the artifact, and it will also use the bootstrap OCI and compare the two layers, the two artifacts, and build a layer out of the platform BST that will go on top of bootstrap OCI. And every element will represent a layer and, and, and an image as well. So for every layer, you make an element. If you have an application, so here, example, transmission daemon, which fits very well in Docker, we can, uh, this is another project that uses the Freelist app SDK. Because with the junction, we can just reuse, okay. We can reuse the, the elements from the uh, upstream uh, project, which is Freelist app SDK. We can just say, I want to make a layer that is reused on top of my bootstrap layer in this case, but I could also use the platform. Uh, yes, that was it for the how it works. That was the tricky part. So the current state uh, of of it, um, we have uh, we push the lay the the Docker images to the Docker Hub. Uh, you can also uh, just build yourself easily and fetch from the cache uh, the images using Buildstream. Uh, for Flatpak, of course, we have always supported that, so we su uh, we uh, distribute that uh, since a long time. For Snap, we have something that is missing, but it's soon there. Um, I have made some examples using Firefox and Transmission uh, to show how to do this kind of thing. So Firefox doesn't provide any Docker images. The reason be because Docker is not very good for pure desktop application. But I have another example, which is Transmission. Transmission has, uh, comes with a different output. There is a GTK front end, there is command lines, and there is a daemon that is just a web interface. Um, if you want, the slides, by the way, you can just go on the program and the slides are put there. Um, and Firefox is a very good example because it's a big ap application that is very annoying to build several times, so you really want to build only once for the different backends. Uh, so those are just examples. This is to show how we can do it, and I uh, would love to have uh, feedback from that if, there, if you think that there is problems or there are, if you want to. If you want to do your own application and distribute on different th things, uh, just look at those. So as I said, we had some problem with Snap. So for Snap, we just wait for uh, one bug to be, well, not, not one bug, one feature to be added in Snap. For the month, uh, the strict conf confinement doesn't work for us. Uh, this is something that will be uh, fixed uh, by the end of the year in Snap. So you can start to use it unless you really want to distribute something right now. But uh, it, it's coming. Also, there are things that we have to look at. For example, uh, the way uh, slash etc is dealt with Flatpak and, and SnapD. Uh, uh, the NVIDIA drivers have not been, been tested in Snap. So it's something I need to do, but uh, I need to have a machine with NVIDIA. Um, we don't have equivalent of Flatpak extension uh, in OCI or SnapD. And also, um, uh, we have uh, something missing in Bluestream to deal with uh, having multiple users in an image, uh, which would be interesting with, for OCM images. So that's something that we need to address. Yes, any question?
Okay, so you've sort of shown how BuildStream works. Um, if I were completely new to this, where do I get it? How do I run it? Yeah, probably should have put a, a link. Uh, it's on GitLab. So it's, if you look, go on gitlab.com slash buildstream, you will find it. It's, uh, there is a, or actually buildstream.build as well. Uh, there, there will be also documentation on how to install. It's a Python project, so you can install it uh, normally with uh, uh, pip if you want. Pip install uh, buildstream. Uh, yes, uh, it's packaged on some distributions. I think Fedora is packaged. Uh, actually, lots of ones. It's all described in this documentation. Uh, buildstream dot build. Should have put that link. <laughs> Um, it was not clear to me how you distinguish um, uh, between the, uh, what you're building, uh, or I mean, for which thing you're building. So, if you want to, if you have to specify the slash app prefix for fl for Flatpak, how do you distinguish that in uh, in the manifest for BuildStream? Uh, I'm sorry. If what was the example that you yeah, said? Yeah. So, if, if you, you want to compile a few dependencies uh, for, but for Flatpak. Uh, sometimes you have to whatever is the you know the build system for the dependency you have mm -hmm. to put slash app. Okay, uh, uh, as the, a prefix, the, how do you yeah, distinguish yeah. between snap yeah. and uh, flat yeah. back? Interesting question. Uh, so the way it's done, uh, it's for snap you can rebind things. So the way you make applications, so the examples bind the application uh, directory into slash app. Uh, for OCI, it's not a problem; you just can put it there. But you should build your application in slash app. It's not a free desktop SDK that asks for it, it's just to be compatible. If you want to also put for a flat pack, you will need to have slash app. Um, yeah, but just, I mean, in the, in the case uh, that you, so you have to have your dependency compiled already for slash app, is that the case? Uh, My, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, everything is built with this, but yeah, your application is built with uh, knowing that the prefix is slash app. You have to do that, but it's not very difficult. I mean, just can uh, your project to just say uh, my prefix is slash app, and all the plugins will take it, and you will build everything there. So it's really meant to be used with the free desktop SDK, right? It's not meant to be uh, distributed outside of the free desktop SDK runtime. So uh, you, you yeah. build for slash app. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll let. Maybe uh, I maybe we can talk about that uh, yeah, 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 because sure. I think it's time. Uh, no problem. And no problem. Okay, so thank you very much.